Hey guys, it's Adrian here, the Canadian in a t-shirt. And today I'll be showing my pay stub and breaking down how to read a pay stub in Canada for 2023. With the new year, we're already seeing tax changes in Canada. So I'll be breaking down all of the payroll deductions that come out of your paycheck, like income tax, CPP, employment insurance, and taxable benefits. I always say it's not about how much money you make, it's about how much money you keep. And it's so important to understand where your money is going. This video is especially helpful for new Canadians, students, and people new to the workforce. But even if you've been working here for 20 years, you might not understand all of the numbers and deductions in your paycheck. So that's what this video is for. I'll be showing you guys my actual pay stubs, both from my corporation where I pay myself a salary and from past employers. I'll start with the first pay stub of the new year. It will be a simple example highlighting the two most important deductions from your pay, income tax and CPP. Then I'll compare this to the same pay stub from last year to illustrate the tax changes for 2023. As I talked about in my last video, these tax changes are good news, reducing your tax bill so that you'll have more money in your pocket and I'll show you proof. Finally, I'll show a more detailed pay stub for my last job, which has a lot more deductions that you've probably seen, like employment insurance, taxable benefits, group insurance, pension plans, disability, and so on. As always, I include timestamps for each chapter, so feel free to skip ahead. Make sure you watch the rest of my Canadian tax guide, my videos with the silver thumbnails, to learn the basics of how taxes work in Canada, what are tax brackets, credits, and deductions, and how to file your taxes step by step. So with that, let's jump in. Most Canadians earn a living by working a job, and when you get paid, you receive a paycheck. This is different from a pay stub. A paycheck is the physical check, the piece of paper that you can deposit at the bank, but more likely, it's automatically deposited into your bank account. A pay stub is what we really care about. It's a detailed breakdown of how much money you earned and how much money was taken away. Every pay stub has three main parts. One, the gross pay, how much money you earned from your salary or wages before taxes. Two, deductions, taxes and fees that come out of your earnings. And three, your net pay. That's how much money actually goes into your bank account. Let's look at an example. Here is my pay stub for the first week of 2023, and you can see the three parts. First, my gross pay. This is the pre-tax salary that I pay myself. Then my deductions and taxes that are taken out automatically. And finally, my net pay. These three are summarized in this box here, but I'll break it down. You'll notice that this is a very simple pay stub with very few deductions. And that's why I'm starting with this example. We'll get more complicated later. Your pay stub will likely have five or six rows of deductions. I only have two, and that's because I own the company. The employer is my corporation, Canadian in a T-shirt, Inc. I am the CEO, so I can choose how much of a salary to pay myself, and I can choose what kind of benefits and deductions I want or don't want. This is a one-man show. I am literally the only employee of this company. I don't have anyone depending on me, so I didn't want to spend money on health insurance plans or disability protection or employment insurance. I chose to cut those out to reduce my deductions as much as possible. But with income tax and CPP, I don't have a choice. I have to pay those. But on the bright side, it makes this example easier for you guys. So back to the top, you can see my employer, my corporation, and myself as the employee. Here you'll see my pay period, which is two weeks. I pay myself bi-weekly, which is the most common approach. With bi-weekly paychecks, you get paid on the same day every two weeks, usually on Fridays. Since there are 52 weeks in a year, you'll receive 26 paychecks in a year. Another option is semi-monthly, where you get paid twice a month or every 15 days. There are 12 months in a year, so you'll receive 24 paychecks each year. You can also get paid once a week or once a month. This will depend on your employer. For me, I chose to pay myself bi-weekly, and I also chose my salary of $90,000. That's my gross salary before taxes. So let's do the math for my gross pay. My salary is $90,000 per year. And since I pay myself bi-weekly, I divide this by 26 paychecks. So each paycheck has a gross pay of $3,461.54. Some jobs will have an hourly wage. So in your pay stub, you'll see the number of hours you worked and how much you earned per hour. 
you might also see overtime where you get paid a higher hourly wage for those extra hours. And you might see commissions, tips, and vacation pay, which is usually about 4% of your gross pay. Again, this is a simple example. I pay myself a fixed salary, nothing else. You will notice that in each section, you have two columns, the amounts for the current pay period, these two weeks, and YTD, which is year to date. YTD is just a running total of your income, taxes, CPP, and net pay that you've accumulated since the start of the year. Again, this is the first paycheck of the year, so both columns are equal. Every employer will have different deductions, but for all Canadians, the two largest deductions you will see are income tax and CPP, the Canadian Pension Plan. For income tax, this is the combination of federal tax that all Canadians pay and provincial tax, which depends on your province. For some provinces, such as Quebec, it is common to see the provincial tax as a separate item on your pay stub, but here in Ontario, they're usually combined. I've already gone over the federal tax brackets in detail in my past video, so check that out. Ontario tax rates are pretty simple, so I'll go through them very quickly. They start at 5% for the first $50,000 of income, then they jump up to 9% for the next $50,000, and after that, they're pretty steady at 11%, then 12%, and then 13% for every $50,000 or so. For Ontario taxes, my rule of thumb when doing quick calculations is just to add 10% on top of the federal tax rates. And since my salary is $90,000, I fall in the second tax bracket, both for federal and provincial taxes. So here you can see for a pre-tax or gross pay of $3,461, I am paying $713 in income tax. So I am paying about 20.6% of my paycheck in taxes. That hurts, but it is better than last year, which I'll get to in a minute. Next we have the CPP, Canadian Pension Plan. This is a federal pension plan that all Canadians pay into, and when you retire, you get to take that money out. So this isn't really a tax because you do get that money back, but while you're working, the CPP is deducted from your paycheck. Note that if you live in Quebec, instead of CPP, you'll pay into the QPP, which is very similar. Here you can see that I am paying almost $200 in CPP contributions from each paycheck. Let's do the math to see how I got this number. In my video on the 2023 tax changes, I showed that the CPP rate increased this year to 5.95%, but there is a CPP exemption of $3,500, meaning that no one pays CPP on their first $3,500 of income. So we take my total salary, $90,000, and we subtract that $3,500 exemption. That gives us $86,500. Now we multiply this by the CPP rate, 5.95%, giving us $5,146.75. That's how much CPP we should be paying throughout the year, but don't worry, the actual amount we pay will be much less. Just like our salary and our taxes, this money is spread out throughout the year, and we have 26 paychecks. So dividing by 26, we get our CPP contribution of $197.95. And looking at our pay stub, that's exactly how much I pay. But remember from my last video, there is an annual maximum that you can contribute to the CPP. And for 2023, that limit is $3,754.45. So here's what happens. Every two weeks, I will pay that $197 to CPP, but towards the end of the year, around September in my case, I will have reached the CPP maximum. At that point, I no longer pay into CPP. Those deductions will automatically stop. And for the rest of the year, my net pay, the money that goes into my pocket, increases by about $200. I'll show you proof in just a minute. So here is my simple pay stub for 2023. I have a gross pay of $3,461 and combining my income tax and CPP, I have a total tax deduction of $911. That gives me a net pay of $2,549.82. That's how much money goes into my bank account. Now let's compare this to the same pay stub from last year. 2022 to prove that my taxes were overall reduced. Here we are, notice the date at the top, January 20th, 2022, so one year ago. Again, my salary did not change in 2022. I was still paying myself the same salary of $90,000. So you'll notice that the gross pay is identical, 
$3,461. But right off the bat, you'll notice that my net pay was lower by $20 last year. For 2023, my salary was the same, but my net pay was increased by $20. Remember from my last video, I said that for 2023, we'll see an increase in CPP payments, that's true, but we'll see an even greater reduction of our taxes. So overall, you can expect more money in your pocket, and that's exactly what we see. In 2022, I was only paying $189 in CPP payments. So for 2023, I saw a $9 increase in CPP deductions. But in 2022, I was paying significantly more in income taxes. I was paying $741 every paycheck in taxes. So for 2023, my tax bill was reduced by $27 every two weeks. Remember how I said that once you reach that annual limit for CPP, those deductions stop? Let's see proof of that from last year. Once again, in 2022, I was paying $189 every paycheck into the CPP. Fast forward to September 29th, and you see that my CPP deductions dropped to zero. In the year to date column, you can see that I reached the maximum limit. For 2022, that limit was $3,499.80. When that happened, my gross pay and income taxes were unchanged, but my CPP deductions stopped. So for the rest of the year, my net pay increased by $189. That's huge. Now let's see a more detailed pay stub for my past job, back before I quit and became a full-time business owner. This format is a little different, but we have the same sections, gross pay, taxes and deductions, and net pay. For this job, I was a software engineer with a salary of about $80,000. But what I really wanna highlight with this example is the long list of deductions and taxable benefits. This is more representative of what your pay stub probably looks like. Once again, the largest deductions are income taxes and CPP, but we have many others. Let's start with EI, employment insurance. Employment insurance, or EI, is a federal program that we all pay into, and it acts as a safety net to help support us if we lose our job through no fault of our own. While you're trying to find a new job, you can claim unemployment benefits and collect up to 55% of your earnings. Just like with the CPP, these earnings are capped at $61,500 for 2023. So if you become unemployed, you can earn up to 55% of this number, giving you up to $650 per week to help keep you afloat. But this money won't last forever. You have between 14 weeks and 45 weeks to find a new job. Remember at the start of the video, I said that I choose not to pay into employment insurance because I am self-employed. I have that choice. But when you work for someone else, you have to pay into EI and your employer pays into it as well. For 2023, the EI premium rate, that's how much you pay, is 1.63% of your paycheck. And again, like CPP, it has an annual maximum of $1,002.45. Let's look at my pay stub to see the math. Back in 2020, the EI rate was 1.58%. So we take my gross pay, $2,956.73, and we multiply by 1.58%. That gives us our EI deduction of $46.72. Just like CPP, I paid this $46 every two weeks until I reached the annual limit, at which point those deductions stop and my take home pay gets increased. The next deduction you'll see is LTD of $27. LTD stands for long-term disability coverage. This is a common insurance plan that your employer pays into. It's designed to protect you and pay you if you become injured or ill and are no longer able to work. Next we have RPP, Registered Pension Plan. This is a retirement pension plan that we pay into and our employer matches our contributions. Again, this will depend on your employer, but the way it worked at my job was I contributed 4% of my paycheck into the pension plan and my employer matched my contribution by putting in 5%. So in total, I collected 9% of my paycheck into my retirement fund. We'll do the math really quickly. Take my gross pay, $2,956, multiply by 4% and you get my RPP contribution, $118.27. This money was invested in a group pension plan and it acted like an RRSP contribution, allowing me to reduce my tax bill, but it also took away from my available RRSP contribution room. I talk about this in detail in my RRSP explained videos here. Those are all of my deductions. Again, these will depend on your job. 
For example, you might have union fees that come out of your paycheck. In the rightmost column, you will see taxable benefits. Again, this will depend on your employer, but at my job, these weren't direct deductions. These were benefits that my employer provided for me. I didn't receive cash, but I did receive a value, so I was taxed on these benefits. At the top, we have a common one, parking. While I was working there, my employer paid for a parking pass. The company paid for this benefit on my behalf. I didn't have to pay for the parking pass, but I did have to pay taxes on it. That's why it's called a taxable benefit. And at the end of the year, when I get my T4, I will see this taxable benefit in box 40. Another taxable benefit you'll probably see is group insurance. This is the company health insurance policy, which covers dental care, vision, physiotherapy, etc. Again, the company pays for it, but I have to pay taxes on it. So for my pay stub, you can see the total taxable benefits were $100.31, but it's not deducted from my pay. It's built into my tax bill. The actual deductions like income tax, CPP, EI, etc., these totaled $869.97. That's what comes out of my paycheck, giving me a net pay of $2,086.76. So there you have it guys, that's how you read a pay stub in Canada and all of the payroll deductions that you need to know. I know taxes aren't the most exciting thing in the world, but it's so important to learn the rules so you can make the most of your money. I'll always be here to help, but make sure you watch my Canadian tax guide to get you started. Thanks for watching guys and be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Every thumbs up and comment really does help me build this channel here on YouTube and hit that bell icon to be notified of my new videos. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Canadian t-shirt, click the link in the box below or click the links on my homepage. Thanks everyone and I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Canadian in a t-shirt. Bye guys.